If a substance produces hydrogen ions or hydronium ions, according to the Arrhenius theory, it is an acid. That is the answer to 7.1. Let's look at 7.2 and 7.2.1. Consider the following acid base reactions. We have reaction X and reaction Y. The first question is saying, from reactions X and Y, identify the reaction that illustrates the Arrhenius theory. So just to recap, just to go over it again, an acid is a substance that produces H plus or H3O plus. So now we're going to go to reaction X and reaction Y and see if we have a substance that is producing H plus or H3O plus. If we go to reaction X, you will see fairly quick that HF, HF is producing H3O plus. It donates a hydrogen. Well, on the other hand, we cannot say the same about reaction Y. There is no H plus produce or H3O plus. So our answer to 7.2.1 is X. Y on the other hand, it is a good example of the Lori Bronsted theory. Let's look at 7.2.2. Write down a balance equation for the hydrolysis of NH4 plus ions. So we have NH4 plus plus H2O. Well, is an H4 plus an acid or a base? I know that it is an acid, but what if you were not aware of that? Let's look at reaction Y again. If you look at the reverse reaction, we have NH4 plus plus NO3 minus. And what does NH4 plus do? It donates a proton to become NH3. So clearly it is an acid because it is donating a proton. You should be able to conclude that NH4 plus is an acid even if you didn't previously know. So in this reaction, if it donates a proton, we're going to have NH3 plus H3O plus. There we go. That is our answer to 7.2.2. On the other hand, 7.2.3, will the resultant solution from question 7.2.2 be acidic, basic, or neutral? Give a reason for your answer. It is going to be acidic. Why are we saying it is going to be acidic? That is because H3O plus is produced. Right. If OH minus was produced, then it was going to be basic. But then in this case, we have H3O plus. Let's move to 7.3. So in 7.3, uh, a sodium hydroxide solution is prepared by dissolving 4 grams of sodium hydroxide in water to make a 500 centimeter cube solution. The first question, 7.3.1. Calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. We have the mass, 4 grams. We have the volume, 500 centimeter cube. How can we find the concentration? We can say that the concentration is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass multiplied by the volume. Right. This is the same as saying that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass and then saying that the concentration is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume. This formula here just combines these two steps into one. Well, stories. Let's go ahead and substitute. The mass is 4 grams. The molar mass of NaOH, sodium hydroxide, it is actually 40, and then the volume is 500 centimeter cube. But we know fully well that we cannot use 500 centimeter cube. We have to convert it to decimeter cube by dividing by 1000. 500 divided by 1000, that is 0 0.5. Five, And if you put that in your calculator, you shall get 0 0.2 moles per decimeter cube. So that is our concentration of sodium hydroxide. 7.3.2. During a titration, 12.5 centimeter cube of sodium hydroxide solution neutralizes 25 centimeter cube of a sulfuric acid solution according to the following balanced equation. Right, we have our equation right there. Uh, sodium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid reacting to give us Na2SO4 plus H2O. What we are required to do is to calculate the pH of the H2SO4 solution. We know that pH is equal to minus log of H 
plus or H3O plus. If we find the concentration of H2SO4, we can find the concentration of H plus and consequently calculate our pH. We have a neutralization reaction. So we can say that the concentration of the acid multiplied by the volume of the acid divided by the concentration of the base multiplied by the volume of the base is equal to the number of moles of the acid divided by the number of moles of the base. Because these two substances are neutralizing each other, the number of moles of acid divided by the number of moles of base will be equal to just the ratio of the balancing coefficient if they indeed neutralize each other. So we can only set up this equation if they neutralize each other. If they don't neutralize each other, you actually cannot use this equation. Right, let's go ahead and substitute. The concentration of the acid, we are looking for that, the concentration of the acid. The volume of the acid that is used, uh, we're told that the sodium hydroxide neutralizes 25 centimeter cube. So we have 25 divided by the concentration of the base uh, we calculated it in 7.3.1 and we found that it is 0 0.2 multiplied by the volume of the base which is 12.5 centimeter cube that is the volume that was used we have 12.5 being equals to the number of moles of acid divided by the number of moles of base like i've said we can use the balancing coefficient because they neutralize each other the balancing coefficient of the acid is 2 while the balancing coefficient of the balancing coefficient of the base is 2 while the balancing coefficient of the acid is 1 so we're going to have 1 divided by Q. So now we just need to find the concentration of the acid. Let's do a bit of math. If we cross multiply, we're going to get concentration of acid multiplied by 25 multiplied by 2 being equals to 1 multiplied by 0 0.2 multiplied by 12.5. If we divide both sides by the coefficient of the acid, so we divide it by 25 multiplied by 2 and we also divide on the right hand side by 25 multiplied by 2. So the concentration of the acid is going to be equal to 0 0.05 moles per decimeter cube. Right, so now we have the concentration of the acid. But let me just remind you, we're not looking for the concentration of the acid per se, but the concentration of H plus or H3O plus. You have to realize that h 2 s 4 gives you 2H plus plus SO4 Q minus. This is to say that if the concentration of H2SO4 is 0 0.05, then the concentration of H plus should be 0 0.05 multiplied by 2 which is just 0 0.1. So that's actually the concentration we're supposed to use to calculate our pH. The pH is equal to minus log of H plus, uh, which happens to be 0 0.1. And if you put that in your calculator, you're going to have pH being equal to 1. 